my thoughts is not your thoughts, my ways. God said it's not your ways. Quit counting God out. Quit counting God out. Romans, the sixth chapter, starting in verse 15, um, verse, uh, 15 yes. When you have it, say amen. amen. Paul says, my God, well then, reading from the New Living, since God's grace has set us free from the law of sin, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you and I become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Don't tell me lifestyle don't matter. You can replace righteous living with lifestyle. 17 says, thank God, Paul says, once we were slaves, once, thank God, once, past tense, we were slaves of sin. But now you and I wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have been given. Verse 18 says, now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slave to living righteous." Because of the weaknesses of the human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery, Paul says, to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity. Listen to the verbiage, y'all. And lawlessness, which led even, I mean, ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be a slave to righteousness. Our right living, our lifestyle, so you can become holy. When you were slaves to sin, verse 20 says, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? Oh, my God. You are now ashamed of the things you used to do. And once upon a time, you were free. You did what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, and what you But what, has the re- what is the result? Pain, suffering. Scars, bad images, oh my God, diseases, sicknesses, lost time, lost wages. Mm, mm, mm. He said you used to do these things that ended in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin. You have become slaves to God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and the result is eternal life. Verse 23 says, for the wages... That's the practice, the lifestyle, the wages. It's interesting he uses a term uh, for employment, wages. You receive, when you work for a company, you receive wages. They pay you what they owe you. When you practice sin, it pays you what you owe him. He said the wages of sin produces Death. Now let me tell you what this death means because I did an in-depth in study. This death is not physical death, baby. It's eternal separation. I can't afford to be separated from God while I'm living on earth. I, I can't afford, my God, not to have that, that vibe and connection to the vine, my God, while I'm on earth. But sins disconnect you, my God, from God. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through which the Lord Jesus Christ has given you. Lord, thank you for the word. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's have a seat. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit. Mm. I'm taking us back to Mahogany's. Yes, I'm going to order again. Something that Tina would say is unhealthy for me. A filet mignon. And mashed potatoes and a strawberry lemonade. That's what I'm gonna order. So we're gonna sit down and eat. And I will order the wife a root beer with no ice. She likes no ice in her drink. She don't like it watered down. Ooh, that'll preach right there. Ooh, my God. Mm. Watered down. I don't like it watered down. Mm. Uh, some of us, uh, maybe Crawford, don't even, can't even tell if it's what, two in. But we have a Paul, like I was saying, and I quite often uh, liken myself to Apostle Paul because he 
went hard one way and he went hard another way. But it's very interesting as I begin to seek God and pray and ask God to show me, my God, and I begin to study. I'm always trying to help the people of God. Oh, my God, as I told the Kingdom Foundation class, everything about this vision is set up, my God, and here at going off of Christ Church, my God, for you to get healthy, for you to discover who you are and what you are. As I taught the class this Sunday, let me do this to everybody. Here is you, my God. Uh, Vontez, come here, son, quickly. My God, I want to give y'all this image. Come stand right here. I need y'all to understand because what the Word of God is getting ready to say, uh, if you don't grasp this, you will never get here. This is destiny. Stand right here, son. You look nice. Thank you, sir. <laughs> he got five. Uh, he got his Adidas on. Adidas, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is destiny. God created your destiny. Then God allowed your mother and your father to come together and conceive you. So then God, after he created your destiny first, then he came and created you for your destiny. So there is what we call a route, a plan that you and I must follow, steps of a good man are ordered. God is trying to order all of our steps to our destiny. We tend to take detours like Joseph did, my God, but Joseph did end up in his destiny. So after God created your destiny first, then he created you, and then it's your job and my job to make sure, even though we may go here, Some of us fall off the cliff like I did. That wasn't good enough, and you try to climb back up the cliff you fall off of. Still didn't learn, and then we. We go join ourselves with people we ain't supposed to be connected to. We go sit with people who can't carry us and have the capacity to handle who we are. We're doing all this, but keep in mind that destiny ain't never moved. But because we serve a loving God, eventually, God is trying to get every last one of us here. So there is some lessons that you have to learn along the way. It's okay, as I taught y'all, to take detours when they God sent. Joseph had to take some detours. He went to the palace, the prison, and so forth, but he ended up being second in command of the powerful nation at that time. But the enemy also comes with detours as well. If the enemy would have had this way, Sister Tina probably would be dead or have one leg by now. But she decided to make some changes, like many of us need to do today. And I encourage you, you know your condition of health. She'll be standing out there behind the lobby at the resource desk ready to field any questions that you may have. Make time. Invest in yourself. Dr. Miles will always say, never put a dollar amount on your soul. Let me say it one more time. Never put a dollar amount. Don't take that $20 and go eat it up at Cheddar's when you can spend $20 to get in shape for your legacy. That's heavy. But we have Paul here in the story. We have Paul here in the story that... uh. Did everything he could to, to try to sabotage the work that God has called Christians to. But he got a great revelation of his purpose when God converted him in the Acts, the ninth chapter. And he used an illustration that in his time, slavery was so real and so alive. Millions and millions of slaves. My God was uh, 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 back in the Roman time. 
So he uses verbiage, my God, to, that they can understand. So y'all stay with me now because this is a heavy type message, but I need y'all to understand because as I told y'all Wednesday, some of us still struggle with being prejudiced. Uh, I'm going to say that one more time. Some of us still struggle with being pre It's still the white man's fault. We still don't trust the white man. They know what they've done. Yeah, 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 I'm coming for that. I'm coming for that too because it's my job to help you. But so Paul uses verbiage terminology that his people can relate to. And so I'm using verbiage terminology that you can relate to. Okay? Are y'all with me so far? So slavery is a concept that is, that, that, that is very much out of place in our modern time, our modern world today. The idea that one human can have the power to force another human to serve him is offensive in our modern minds. That's why the people of God struggle with submitting to authority. Because we feel like we ain't got to submit to nothing. We ain't got to submit to nobody. See what I'm trying to say? The world has messed up the believer's mind because we have adopted the world's way of thinking instead of God's way of thinking. And so we feel like we ain't got to submit to nobody. We, our love is conditional. Our submission is conditional. Our commitment is conditional. Everything is conditional if I want to. And that's what, and that helps, that disqualifies you and I for receiving a manifold blessing at times because we're serving God according to our will and not serving God according to his will. Are y'all with me so far? My God, so the thought of being oppressed or, or led, my God, by another human being submitting, not oppressed, submitting to another human being, that could be very offensive. I will follow you until you ask me to, until you tell me to do something I don't want to do. I will submit to you, I will love and honor you and respect you until you check me. See what I'm trying to say? And so, 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 you ain't my daddy. As I told the class, my God, me and my wife got this saying, you ain't the boss of me. And we was in the mall, my God, yesterday, and the man heard, heard I said that to my wife, and another man said, uh, uh, see, we ain't, I ain't going, <laughs> whatever he said, baby, I'm not the only person to tell you that, I believe that, whatever he said, because he must have told his wife that you ain't the boss of me, and we all, just four of us just started laughing yesterday. Oh, my God, come on, somebody, let me understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, when we tell somebody you ain't the boss of me, that's because we don't want to submit to nobody. But I want you to understand something, in order to go up in God, you're going to have to be submitted. In order to fully possess what God has for you, there has to be a level of submission. Oh, my God, if you're going to do what God has called you to do and reach your destiny, you're going to have to learn, my God, the art of submission and surrender. Ah, oh, my God, the Bible says when two or three uh, come together in his name, does the kingdom come. My God, when two or two, three people walk, my God, my God, the, the, the walk together, how can there be agreement? My God, agreement comes through submission. In order for us to be in agreement, we got to be submitted one to another. So I want you all to understand, you can't live in God's kingdom and think that you can't, don't have to submit to nobody. You can't operate in God's kingdom and think, my God, that you ain't got the answer to nobody that it don't work like that are y'all with me so far come on talk to me are y'all with me so far because many people in the church even in this church right now struggles with submission right now even on our jobs we struggle with somebody being the third because she got made you mad one time now you can't stand her your supervisor and you go with the mindset my god to try to cause as much problem to her as you can but how many know that how many know god ain't sent you that job so you could change the atmosphere like i taught you wednesday instead of letting the atmosphere change you how you know god ain't trying to my god make break you so he can prepare you for where he's taking you to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. god got you strategically placed for a reason Right there, my God. The majority of us uh, 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 will recall, recall at the very thought of owning a slave, or especially at the thought of being a slave. Oh, you, 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 you. <laughs> wish you would. Come on. We, see, we buck at any level of, of authority. We buck at any level of control. Because truth be told, it's in the human nature not to be dominated. Because God said in Genesis, he gave us dominion over everything but people. And so when you back a man in the corner, he got two things submit. I come out fighting. You back a woman into the corner, she's going to do one, one or two things. She's going to submit, I come out fighting. Because it's not in our nature, my God, to be dominated. See what I'm trying to say? You have to train yourself to be God. You got to train yourself to be submissive. You got to train yourself, my God, my God, to receive the will of the Father in your life. God will place people over your life, my God, that you can't stand. But God is trying to prepare you again for this right here. Everything that God does in a man or woman's life is about this right here. Y'all need to get that image again. Everything you're going to experience, everything you're going to go through is about this right here. Destiny. You got to make sure that you're on a route that leads to destiny. Thank you for the first time guests that understand what the Spirit of God is saying. Everything that God is doing in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly is all about that right there. Okay? All right? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In these in the last verses of chapter six, I just read to you, the, uh, Paul presents a series of contrasts that points out the fact that we are all slaves, and we are. I'm going somewhere with it, and we will continue to be slaves. Yes, I am. My God, to Christ. But 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 that we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice. My God, of which master we will serve. I want you to be able to see clearly, my God, which master you are serving, my God. I want you to understand and see clearly what master are you serving. So the title of this message is, who are you a slave to? So when we think of the word slave, or we hear the word slave, my God, uh, it sends many different feelings. I, I didn't grow up in a lot of y'all times, for those that's much older, some of y'all dealt with this head on, my God. Oh, my God, if you're much older, in the, uh, what, in the 30s and 40s and so forth, you dealt with, with this right here, my God. I, I dealt with a level of racism and so forth, but not to the point of slavery like some of you may have experienced. But this is not the slavery I'm talking about. I'm not talking about black and white slavery. Because according to like Pastor Jeff told me, we all, we should be do losses. Do losses. That's say slaves to Christ. All of us is a slave to something. All of us is being controlled by something. All of us is being dominated by something. Whether it's the lust of the lies, the pride of life, or the lust of the flesh. You got to ask yourself, my God, what am I a slave to right now under the sound of Pastor People's voice? What am I a slave to? 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 One leads to death and another leads to eternal life. You make the choice. Are y'all with me so far? So point number one, put it on the screen. We all have choices. We all have choices. We get to choose. He said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. He says, choose life. Oh, my God, God tells you not to choose life. Oh, my God. He tells us to choose eternal life. Choose what's good for you. Walk away, my God, from the things that's causing you pain. Walk away from the people, the places, and the things that's hurting you. You have a choice. If you are not being held hostage <laughs> and the very people, places, and things that you are attending or going to is causing you so much pain, my God, why are you choosing to stay? Why do we continue to go back to the places that hurts us the most? Why do we continue to hang around the people that causes us the most pain and frustration? You are making a choice. As my God, Ron McIntosh teaches us, we are a sum total of our own choices. If you do not like what's manifesting external, you have to look at what's going on internal. Oh, my God, if ain't nobody forcing you to do something, then you are making the choice. And the good thing about Jesus and the good thing about the word, God gave us a choice. We could choose life or we could choose death. He made a way for us to choose life. It would be ungodly, my God, of God, if he said you got a choice to make, but he didn't make a way. Oh, my God, he said you don't have to die in sin. My God, you don't have to die in sin. I made a way for you to have the gift of eternal life. Choose life. I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. He says choose life. But why do we as Christians always choose death? Why do we serve God for an hour and a half if we could do that, my God, and go out there and we choose death? Why? Ask yourself that. Oh, my God. We understand that we was all created, my God, after Adam, the first Adam, and we was formed in sin, shaped in sin. We understand that we all have a sin nature, but Christ came and died so that our sin nature don't have to dominate us, so we don't have to be a slave to our sin nature. He couldn't ask us, my God, to choose him and yet be dominated by sin, dominated by the slave master if he didn't make a way for us to rule it instead of it ruling us. Oh, this is heavy teaching, my God. So you don't have to continue to be dominated dominated by sin. Why? Because God, my God, paid a price for you and I to be free. It's a gift. You got to choose, my God. Who, my God, to walk in freedom? You got to choose not to be dominated by habitual sin. You don't have to commit sin every single day. I'm talking about habitual sin and be dominated by it. I'm talking about trapped in iniquity. David said, Lord, don't let iniquity have dominion on me. I'm talking about stuff that you will not stop doing. We all commit sin, but I'm talking about stuff that you won't stop doing. The wages. The wages. It don't have to be like that, Christians. We have a choice. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Who are you a slave to? Paul tells us that we have the privilege of yielding, yielding our members to a master. The word yield means to stand as a servant, near one's master, awaiting orders, awaiting orders, awaiting orders. So, my God, let me make this visual. Come up here, son. He is yielded. I am the king. This is a slave. This is a servant. Another word for servant is slave in the scripture. When you study that Greek or, 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 or Hebrew, when you look at it. So this is a servant. Another word, slave, as I said. So he stands right here, yielded to me. When I say go, go. Go, son. Come back. Go hug, first lady. Come on, y'all. Y'all stay with me, church. Come back. Stop right there. Go hug Sharon. 
Come, go hug Christy. <laughs> See, what you have to understand is, thank you, son. What you have to understand is, my God, after that man of God is sent out, my God, is you and I, as subject in God's kingdom, is sent out to do what and carry out the king's command, it's our job to come back and stand in post. And wait for the next order. And see, some of y'all don't understand that. Some of y'all don't understand that. But this is how the kingdom operate. My God. My God. A servant, my God, or a slave is yielded to the master's voice. He's waiting on the next control. He's waiting on the next command. He's waiting on the next permission to be released, my God, to carry out and conduct the king's business. Oh, my God. On earth. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But some of us don't understand. I'm going to tell you another way I learned that in prison. Now, go and say, stand here and don't move. Move if you want to. See, because some of us, I thank God because prison retrained me how to submit to authority. Uh, prison taught me, my God, to understand, my God, the importance of obeying, or of obeying Romans 13 when it said obey the laws of the land. See, I'm trying to say some of that very thing that you shun, some of that very stuff that you find hard to accept, my God, is the very thing that you need. The people that you find hard to be or get along with, hard to be around, is the very people you need to prepare you, to shape you, to get to your destiny. If you can't follow God's voice, how can you reach your destiny? If you can't yield and submit to the master, how are you going to ever reach your, maximize and reach your destiny, my God? God is trying to train you how to yield, my God. And a servant or a slave, my God, yields to the voice of the master. Not the voice of sin. It says, don't give your members over, don't yield your members, don't give your members over to sin. Are y'all with me so far? The idea of a man who is at the beck and call, another thing, my God, when you yield, it's the idea of a man at a beck and call of his master. Romans 6, 15 uh, 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 and 16 says, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean that we can go on sinning? Paul said, of course not. Don't you realize, listen to what he say, don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey. So therefore they say, okay, since grace has covered this and fixed this, do I get the permission to live and do what I want to do? Paul said, no, 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 let me help you understand something. Just because, my God, you up under grace now, you ain't up under the law. Law, could nobody fulfill the law. Could nobody, my God, live righteous unto the law. So God come and made a way. Thank God for Jesus. Now we up under grace. Oh, my God. So now, my God, grace covers everything I do. True enough. But they don't give you a license to practice. Being disobedient because remember he shifts. He said, you become a slave, you yield to whatever is your master. So don't you know it's possible to be a Christian up under God's grace and be dominated by something that you should be dominating? Because you yield your instruments, you yield your mind to sin and not to the spirit. Paul said you don't get to do that. Just because you're up under grace don't mean you get to live any kind of way you want to live. Oh, this is heavy teaching. I know some of us don't like it because we want to say God know my heart. Which is he do? And he says, it's wicked. Come on, sir. Watch what he says. He says, of course not, Paul says. I want to teach y'all, church. He said, he said, don't you realize that you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey? So you have a choice. You, you and I become a slave to what we choose. You can choose to be a slave of Christ or you can be a, choose to be a slave of the devil. Your choice. When you leave up out of here, you're going to be forced. My God, you're going you're gonna to have an opportunity to make a decision. To stay, to choose Christ on out here, out, outside the four walls. Or are you going to go pick up something that's it's your choice? Are, are you with me so far? I want to lay this out here plain so we can understand because many people wrestle. Right here. This is a pulse for our church. Right here. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody else but us. In this church right now. And we got to get a clear understanding. Because you can't adhere to something. You can't submit to something, my God, that you have no understanding about. And many of us read the scripture, but we don't really understand. God paid a price so you don't have to be dominated by sin. You and I have a choice. My God, we don't have to be dominated by sin. You can choose not to sin. When somebody drives you, I'm going to drive you off the road. You ain't got to cuss them out. You can make a choice not to cuss them out. You make that choice. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. You could be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you could choose to obey God, which leads to righteousness. God said you have a choice. You could choose death or you could choose life. Ask yourself, on a scale of 1 to 10 in a 24-hour day, how much am I choosing life or how much am I choosing death? You need to make it, make it that simple. How much life am I choosing? How much life am I choosing in the 24 hours that God gives you? How much life are you choosing? Are we frustrated because we're choosing death and we wonder why the heavens, my God, is closed? Ask yourself that question. What choices am I making when I'm not around the saints, when I'm not in church? The whole point of these two verses, my God, what I'm trying to convey is that we have a choice as to who we yield our lives to. Notice there are only two choices. Write this down up on the point number one. We can walk in rebellion. You can choose to walk in rebellion. 
Oh, my God, don't you know that's prevalent in the body of Christ? I like you, ma'am, whoever you are. Thank you for coming to going on for Christ Church, but I can tell, my God, that you're a little older than I am, my God, but you are helping me preach the gospel because you can identify, my God. Sometimes we can get so used to hearing stuff and it don't have no effect on us, my God, but when God brings somebody from the outside to confirm his message, my God, it lifts your spirit. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. But we can choose to walk in rebellion. Don't you know the Bible said the wages, my God, of rebellion is like witchcraft. Witchcraft. Think about witchcraft. It's wicked. But we choose that, Christians, to walk in rebellion. And I know all of us don't want to walk in rebellion. We, don't, we really don't want to do that. Huh? We really don't want to act like that. We really don't want to be a, a rebellion against authority. We, we really want to treat our wives right. We really want to treat our kids right. Uh, we really don't want to be talking behind our supervisor's back and stuff like that. We don't want to operate like that. We don't want to rebel on God's word. We really want to read, but something is keeping us from reading. <laughs> oh, my God. We really want to pray, but something is keeping us from making the 6 o'clock prayer. We really, in our spiritual man, don't want to act like that. But in our flesh, we'll do everything I said that we really don't want to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can take grace for granted. We can take grace for granted. Oh, my God. And we can just assume that God is going to accept us just as we are and live like we want to. This is the life of a sin, of sinful rebellion. While many, my God, while many may live like this uh, uh, and think that they are free, Paul makes it clear that they are really a slave to sin. Paul is letting the church know, the Roman church know, my God, not to take God's grace for granted. God has allowed you and I to experience his grace for the sole purpose for us to make the changes that we need to make in our life. God's grace and mercy is only there for you and I to change. When you and I refuses, my God, to, to, to use God's grace as an opportunity to get better, then we fall. Watch this, church. Then we begin to move over it real subtle. Look at me. We understand God has already pointed out the things we need to work on. Oh, I'm talking to myself. We are, God has already pointed out the things we need to work on. See, the Bible says God always gives warning before destruction. And so when we choose, my God, to turn our back on the warnings, and then we fall over here, my God, and we, we suddenly, suddenly, my God, has shifted. And now we're walking in full-blown rebellion because God told us to do something right there, and we didn't do it. God said, rebellion. Rebellion. Heaven closed, rebellion, heaven closed. I'm, I'm, boy, this is, see, this is another, see, he told you what to do, but you ain't done it. He told you, see, right back there, talk to her and ask her to help you. I ask her to forgive you, but you won't do it. She's sitting right here asking you to forgive her, but I won't do it. Sitting right here asking you to forgive, rebellion in the house of the Lord. My God covered up with a whole lot of religious activity, but suddenly rebelled it. Heart then shifted. Submitted to the pastor when you want to. Respect the woman of God when you feel like it. Honoring the wife when you want to. Walking around with a whole lot of hate and bitterness in your heart. I'm using those words because those are the little things that the enemy uses to sabotage her. And God said, there she go, ask her to forgive you. There you go, Jackie, ask him to forgive you, but we won't do it. But we steady doing all this. We steady putting cloths over people. We steady running down there trying to pray with somebody. Rebellion. It's that simplistic. It's that simplistic. Drifting from up under God's grace and stepped and made a choice to choose rebellion. But we also, just like we chose, we could choose to be rebel, we can also choose, write this down, to be righteous. I'm making it simple. Don't look for no deep word, look for impartation. Sometimes deep, don't get it. Conviction changes. We can choose to walk in righteousness. Did y'all write that down? By the same token, we can choose to walk in the will of God and to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to the Lord. Instead of yielding, giving over, that's what that means, my God, our bodies to sin, we can present our bodies to the Lord for, for his use and for his glory. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says what? And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I plead, Paul says, with you to give your bodies to God. Because all he has done for you, when you think about how good God been to you, I've always told the young men of God that when God blesses you, it should increase your tenacity. It should increase your love. It should increase your devotion to the Lord. Think about the things God has done for you, Robert. Think about the things, Trees, that God has done for you. Stephanie, think. I need y'all to say, Lord, and think. My God, my God, what God 
has done for you. Look how good God has been to every last person under the sound of my voice and all those that are looking by way of the well, my God. God has been good to us, my God. Mm. Paul said, I plead with you. Paul is pleading with the people of God, my God, to give their bodies to God because he has done so much for you. Ain't you grateful? Ain't you thankful and grateful for what God has done for you? He had, my God, my God, God has been, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Oh, my God, uh, all around the country, the world, the church should be full of people because God has been so good to the saved as well as the unsaved. Mm, 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 that hit me in my spirit. Mm. Ain't you grateful? Think about it. Think about what it could have been, should have been. But God's grace and mercy stepped in. Mm, mm, mm. He says, let your bodies, watch this, be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will, not man, he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Watch this. He says, oh, my God, this is kingdom. Verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Go from a caterpillar to a butterfly by the way you think. So that's why the Bible says, whoever, look at me, y'all, whoever gets the mind gets the life. Let me tell you what it says. My God, it's with the mind that we serve God. You would never give your body as a living sacrifice because the mind controls the body. Jesus said, be careful what you lean your ear to. So Jesus said, be careful what you lean your ear to. So guess what? My ear is connected to my head. So if my ear is listening, look at my body, y'all. My body is following what my ear is listening to. So wherever I lend my ear to, my body has to follow. You can't present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. My God, if your mind is all messed up. He said you, you, you cross over into a new way. You move from sin to God's grace, my God, and you begin to live different solely by the way you think. We got to understand how powerful. We made jokes, my God, about that video, the, 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 the commercial, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. That has so much substance to it. See what I'm to say? So Paul said, my God, my God, you can, you can cross over. Just by the renewing of your mind. And so many of us is feeling defeated. We're feeling frustrated in relationships, frustrated about different things that's going on. Ask yourself, who, who's winning the battle in the mind? What, what am I a slave to when I'm not at church? It's 24 hours of my mind uh, of giving over to sin, giving over to flesh, giving over to the world. Uh, Paul says, don't copy. See, you got the world system and you got God's system. When we got saved, we come up out of the world system. That's why I tell you, many people get elected to Christ. Instead of them conforming to the second Adam, they stay after the first Adam. Don't you know the first Adam was conformed, my God, and he was in the world. And so now when you come to Christ, my God, grace, oh, Jesus, second Adam represents grace. The first Adam represents sin and death, my God. God snatched you up out of sin and death, and he conformed you to the second Adam, which is grace. Now he says, live like it. Woo, somebody give God a hand in the church, my God. Mm. And so, therefore, we got to begin to pattern our life after the second Adam, grace. Are y'all with me so far? Mmm, my God. The choice is yours. You can serve whoever you want. Notice the word obey. This word in the scripture means to answer a knock at the door. Choice and decision concerning how you live, how we live our lives, come knocking every single day. Ah, uh, come on, somebody. When we open the door, we can either be a slave to sin or we can be a slave to Jesus. It is our choice that we must make. Choices come knocking every single day. And you got to make sure that when you open the door of your eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate, when you open your heart, when you lean your ear, when you open your mind, when the knock come, you better make sure that's a knock that's going to lead to eternal life and not a knock that's going to lead to death. Woo. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Mm. Lord, have mercy. I knew it was going to be heavy. Let me read y'all something. The ultimate problem of human beings is not the fact that, not the fact that, that of sin, but more 
basic uh, situation of being a slave to sin. The ultimate problem of human beings is not the fact of sin, but the more basic situation of being a slave to sin. And the reason why John MacArthur pushed that because, see, God has paid the price. He's done away with sin. But we choose to sin. And whatever you choose, you become a mass slave to. Don't you know you have to choose to be depressed? You have to choose this stuff. Everything comes down to a choice. And so Paul is making a distinction between sin and grace. Eternal life and eternal death. Separation and life. Everything's come down to a choice. But their choice is centered right here. You got to understand that you don't have to be dominated by the world's way. What dominates and hurt professing believers is we never come up out of the world's way. We continue to try to operate in God's kingdom with the first Adam's mindset. We always talk about forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me because we're a slave to sin. When we should be coming to the altar by now saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't make that decision last night. <laughs> number two, we give you number two. After you make a choice, here come the changes. Write down the changes. Up on the point number two, God speaks of our past failures in this verse. He refers to a time before trusting Jesus when we were slaves to sin. See, things should be different. If you're following my God, you're making a choice to accept Christ, accept his grace, accept his will for your life, and then you choose to pattern your life after Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let me bring some context. My God, you pattern your life after 12, 1 and 2, there should be some changes. After you make a choice that you're no longer going to be a slave to sin, that you're going to be a slave to God's grace, mercy, and his love, come on somebody, then changes should take place because you're no longer, my God, allowing your mind to be given over to the sin because your body has to follow your mind. Come on, somebody. So guess what? Your body can't go nowhere with your mind. Don't let it go. So if you find yourself somewhere out of pocket, out of place, guess what? Your mind took you there. And all your body did is submit. Don't you know your body, thank you, Holy Ghost, this is good, my God. Oh, my God. Don't you know your body, watch this, man of God, your body got to submit to your thoughts or your mind. See, this, this is so real. The, body, the mind controls the body. And if you're in God, God should control the mind, which controls the body. If you ain't reading and you ain't studying, my God, God don't have control of your mind. That's why we dominated by something we're supposed to be dominating. That's why you see the church empty, my God, almost all around the country because people are leaving the church everywhere because they're being dominated, oh, my God, in their mind. And they're leaving the church and going after the world's way. And Paul said, don't copy the world's way. God should control the mind, which in turn controls the body. And then you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And then when you do that, there won't be too much residue from the past. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Mm, Ephesians 2, 1 and 3 says this. Ephesians, write this down, 2, 1 and 3. Once you were dead, this is Paul, again, addressing the Ephesian church, the Ephesus church, the Ephesian church. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Don't you know the word of God says obedience is better than a sacrifice? See, these type of messages is not easy to deliver because I love you so much. But you could come down here and you could come to church, even embrace the rain and the flood and all that, and come here and already got your mind made that you're going to do exactly what you know you shouldn't be doing when you leave church. That is direct rebellion. When you know you're going to go get involved with something, let me help you, that you know God is not pleased with. That's direct disobedience. That's what you call, oh my God, the psalmist said, David said, don't let me have willful sins, willful disobedience. When you know you're not going to do right. Bishop Hurl Wayne Jones said, don't go to hell by way of the church house. Mm, mm, mm. He, he said, he said you, you was once dead. Christians, you was once dead because of disobedience and your many sins. We shouldn't be operating in disobedience. We should have many sins now that we are Christians after the second Adam. Are y'all with me so far? It said, you used to live in sin. You used to. You used to practice this thing. You used to love this stuff, but you used to. Just like the rest of the world, Ephesians say, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to be obey God. He, as Paul says in Ephesians, it's a spirit and people. Check the earth, son. 
that chooses to obey, disobey God. It's a spirit when you see a pattern of disobedience in God's children. It's a spirit that's being motivated by the enemy. When you see a pattern, that's a lifestyle of disobedience, rebellion, conditional submission, lack of faithfulness to the house. It's a spirit that we're dealing with. This is heavy teaching right here. See what I said? We just think, my God, oh, they're not perfect. The devil is a lie. It's a spirit motivating them to be disobedient. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, my God. It's the spirit that's driving this stuff. It's the spirit of murder in the atmosphere. It's the spirit of lack and poverty in the mindsets of people. All of it is the spirit. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. All of us used to live this way, Paul says, uh, following that way. Following the passion and desires and inclination of our sinful nature. But, but, but by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger. Just like everyone else. Christians, according to our very nature, sin nature, we were subject to God's wrath and anger. But God made a way. He made a way. He made a way for you and I. He made a way so we don't have to fall upon his judgment and his wrath. God made a way. Y'all, let me say it again. God made a way so you and I don't have to fall up under his judgment. Oh, my God, that we can experience heaven on earth, <laughs> that we can experience the kingdom life on earth, <laughs> that we can have a kingdom marriage, kingdom kids, kingdom finances, kingdom way of thinking. Everything is kingdom. Oh, my God, God made a way, but you have to choose to accept the king's way. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, help my mind. He reminds us of the bondage, Paul does. We endure before we came to know Jesus as Savior. For those who remember their former lifestyles just before Jesus. I just told Pastor Champ in the back, sometimes people forget what it used to be like. When you start forgetting what God snatched you out of, when you start forgetting how God made all of that stuff bow down to grace, God made drug addiction bow down to grace. Sexual sin bow down to grace. Disobedience bow down to grace. Suicide bow down to grace. Mental torment bow down to grace. My God. Oh, my God. All that stuff had to bow down to grace. When you think about what God has done for you, my God, how can you not worship God? How can you not go hard for God? How can you not scream and shout? How can you not, my God, when you think about the things that God has done for you, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Mm. Oh, my God, it's amazing how people will sit in the church and show no external expression. It's like God ain't done nothing for them. They come to church and just sit here like a lump on a wall. Oh, my God, but God been good to somebody in this church other than pastor people, my God. I don't know about you, my God, but I got a reason. I don't care if you don't never praise him. I'm going to praise him because the rocks ain't going to never pray before me. God been too good to me, baby. Mm. Let me go a little deeper. I want to get at least point number two finished, my God. Oh, my God, but can you remember what he's done for you? Don't forget. That's why the Bible keeps telling them, my God, in the Old Testament, remember what he's done for you. See, my God, remember when you start with forgetting some of the stuff that God has done for you, you're bound to repeat the past. When, when, when you stop remembering, when you stop remembering what God has done for you, you become ungrateful. You start complaining all the time. You forget, my God, what God has done for you and what he brought you out. You become hard, my God. Oh, my God, you become hard on people, my God, my God, because you forget, my God, God's mercy and grace in your life. As I talk to me, and the hardest person to lead is yourself. And my God, when you forget what God's done for you, you make it hard on somebody else because you forgot God's grace and mercy in your own life. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God, I can't help nobody today. Oh my God! Uh, uh, it, it was. It, it, remember this, y'all. It was. It was. It was terrible. It was a terrible time in our lives. We were slave to our desires, impulses, and passions. Slave to our desires. Lord, help me. Impulses and passions. Oh my God! But God delivered you from that. Oh, yeah, I know we can catch Christ going sometime, and I know we make mistakes and so forth. But overall, if you're following the second Adam, my God, you, them, that same stuff that you were struggling with, them same battles, my God, and all that stuff, it should not be dominating you in your presence. Yeah. The only reason why it's dominating your prayer because you're not spending enough time with God so he can renovate your mind. Yeah. 
the images that we have up in our mind, the things that we can't seem to shake. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I can read, I have to shake my head to shake that image up out of my mind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, because the enemy will try because there's a war going on between flesh and spirit. Oh, my God, there's a war going on all the time, my God. And whatever you yield to, that is your master. What I'm trying to get you to understand is what and who are you a slave to, my God? You can't come in the house of the Lord and act like you're righteous for an hour and then go out there and be a slave to sin and think you're going to have victory. Oh, my God, you got to walk in victory. That's a choice, my God. You got to choose to accept, my God, the free will of God's grace, which is a gift to mankind, my God. Oh, my God, you don't have to be dominated by sin. It's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't have to be defeated, my God, as Christians, my God, behind sin. You don't have to. The church is full of sin everywhere. And Paul says, quit adopting the custom of the world. Everybody trying to bring the world into the church to try to get people to come to church. They're doing all this stuff to try to bring entertainment and people's faith and hope is built on entertainment and not on Christ. And they hear a message like this, they don't like. Because we don't, don't want to be challenged. We don't want to be inconvenienced. Don't ask me to stop. Just thank God I came to church. Well, if that's how you feel, this ain't the church for you. God going to take care of this right here. I promise you. He is taking care of it. Yes, Lord, I give God the glory. But we, we got to understand that God has delivered you and I. Don't be a slave to your desires, impulses, and passions. My God, write this down. He speaks to our faith. Write this down up on the point number two. God speaks to our faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, A was, my God, he speaks to our past failure. That's what Ephesians 2 was about. God told me that's past 10. He says, in Ephesians, you used to live like this. You shouldn't be living like this now. That ain't supposed to be for the second Adam's. Adam, Adam, the Hebrew name Adam, translate that to human, human. God has paid a price. We don't have to be dominated in our human nature by sin because Christ came and died once and for all for sin. So you choose to sin. I choose to sin. You don't have to be dominated. I'm redundant behind sin, mm. which in turn shuts the heavens up, frustrates the people of God. Hinder, my God, you from reaching your destiny. Even though I went all around and I eventually made it to my destination, my destiny, but look how much time was wasted. Oh, my God, they preached a sermon about coming in on broken pieces. My God, ain't you tired? Ain't you tired of suffering? Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired? Why do you want to continue to suffer when you ain't got to? Unnecessary suffering, unnecessary trials, unnecessary tribulation. I don't want to go through that stuff if I ain't got through. So just stay on the right road. Even when you don't understand, just trust them. Oh, walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, my God, endure what you God called to endure and let the other fall by and wait, side, baby. Ain't you tired? Oh, my God, only few people stood up because they tired. I guess everybody else ain't tired. Is anybody else tired in the church? My God. Oh, Jesus. Ah, Lord, thank you, Lord. Now, Paul reminds us of the day we trusted Jesus. Let's go a little farther. Let me pick you up. Now, Paul shifts. Oh, my God, God dealt with your past by way of sending Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God, now God is speaking to your your future now. Now, Paul reminds us of the day we trusted Jesus. When we obeyed and answered God's knock at our heart's door, everything changed. According to Revelation 3.20, look, I, Jesus said, I stand at the door and... Knock. Oh, get this in your ear because God is going to be knocking. Guess who else going to knock? Satan. He's persistent. Satan is determined. Satan refuses to quit. Satan won't bow down. Satan don't care about your tongues. Satan don't care about you prophesying. Satan don't care about your gifts. Satan is knocking. You have to make a choice. Oh, my God, you better know who's knocking. You better know what's knocking. Oh, my God, you better be all assistant enough to know uh, on the other side of that door is the enemy. He's knocking, and he ain't going to stop knocking. Oh, my God, he ain't going to stop knocking. Guess what? He's waiting outside the door for you. Mm. Mm. He's standing at the door knocking. We understand that's God standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice, God says, open the door, and I will come in, and I will share a meal with you. God said, uh, I'm knocking. Let me come on in and sit with you. God said, I, I just want to sit with you. 
Let's share a meal. Let's break bread together. Let's, let's, let's partake of the Lord's Supper. That's what the Lord's Supper consists of, the body coming together to remember the sacrifice that was paid. Oh, we're having a meal together. God said, I'm standing at the door knocking. I want to come in so I can endure you with power, so I can give you strength, so I can give you revelation, so I can prepare you for your destiny, my God. Won't you let me in? <laughs> Don't keep me on the outside. <laughs> Just open up your heart and surrender and submit so I can come in and I can give you everything. I got houses you didn't build, <laughs> vineyards you didn't plant. I got things, my God, that your eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Need to have an energy. If you just let me in, some of y'all just got to let him in. Some of y'all just got to open up and let him in. My God. Oh, my God. We got, ah. Oh, we have been through so much pain. We have made so many mistakes. We need to keep God locked out. Oh, my God. You know you're in trouble when you keep God locked out. He's knocking. And you won't let God in. Let me tell you how you keep them locked out. When you know a word like this in the power of you and you turn your back on it. You lock God out. God assert this word to encourage you not to condemn nobody. He's knocking. But many of us will walk right up out of there because the natural fleshly time got them. And I'm watching them. And some other ones I see, I'm going to keep it on a dollar, really need to hear this word. That's just being real because I care about the people. Just like Satan is persistent, so is God. His grace is running you down. His grace is after you. His love won't lie. He won't be denied. Just because you rebel, just because you be stubborn, just because you won't submit, God gonna keep on knocking. He gonna keep on coming. He ain't going nowhere. I promise you, he ain't going nowhere. I promise he ain't going nowhere. He gonna keep on knocking. He gonna keep on knocking. He gonna keep on knocking until you submit. Uh, you can do it God's way, or you can do it the hard way. I can't get nobody to say. Mm. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. So God is knocking. Number three, write this down. Uh, uh, number C up under number two. He speaks to our present freedom, our faith in our present freedom. Verse 18 says, now you are set free from slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteousness. This verse reminds us that what Jesus did for us was to purchase our freedom and slavery to sin. He purchased it. Revelation chapter 5, 9 tells us we are redeemed. The word redeem in the scripture means to, to buy in the marketplace. Mm. It refers to the purchase of a slave from the slave box. I thank God that Jesus redeemed us. I thank God that his son purchased me. I thank God I don't have to be dominated and I don't have to die in my sins and go to a burning hell. I thank God that he made a way by redeeming me. That I was a slave to sin before I came to know Christ. And now I don't mind being a slave to Christ. Oh, I'm a do loss, as Pastor Jeff say, my God. I don't mind being a slave to Christ. I'm standing waiting for the orders of the master. I'm yielded to the master. I'm waiting for direct commands to the masters. I talk to class, my God. Oh, my God, as conductors, my God, as supervisors, my God. Oh, my God, as good custodians, my God, over that what God has given you, my God. You got to be faithful. You got to supervise right. You got to lead right. My God, many of us must understand that God purchased you with a precious sacrifice, which was his life, so that you can have freedom and not be dominated by the world's standard, that you can walk in victory, that you can walk above all the pain that you see, all the hurt that you see. But you got to quit letting people mishandle you. You got to quit joining yourself with things and places and situations that's causing so much pain. You got to allow the Spirit of God to separate flesh from spirit. There need to be a ripping away, my God. Some of us is holding on to the flesh too much. We holding on to the former. We holding on to the first Adam. Why don't God is trying to rip you away from that and conform you after the second Adam? Pattern your life after the second Adam. The second Adam is Jesus. He had no sin. He was a lion from the tribe of Judah. He walked high, my God, and he soared high, my God. Oh, my God, the second Adam walked in dominion. He walked and operated in rulership, my God. When he showed up, my God, demons began to tremble. Oh, when he showed up, that was blind, had to come and see. Oh, my God, when he showed up, my God, that was had died. When he spoke and said lies, it would come forth. Oh, my God, he walked in so much power, and God I said the same power and the same spirit that raised God from the dead lives on the inside of us. But see, you don't expect, my God, God to move like that. You ain't giving God nothing to work with, my God. God is still doing miracles. Truth be told, when you look at yourself, you're looking at a miracle. I can't get nobody to say that like that. And I said, when you look at yourself, you're looking at a miracle. 
Oh, you looking at somebody that was there trying to get their legs cut off. Now she's training other people. That's a miracle. See, when I might say you disqualifying yourself because you're looking for the eyes to be open and somebody come back from the dead. That's happening too. But how not give yourself the credit because you're a miracle. You ain't nothing like you used to be. God redeemed you. He purchased you. He bought you back. Let me say something to you. And I'm on file and on record. We are all slaves to something. Before we got saved, we was a slave to disobedience, to impurity, to lust. We was a slave to homosexuality, lesbian, and all of those stuff. Drug addiction, disobedience, rebellion, you name it, my God. Low self-esteem, lack of confidence, all that stuff. That's all the first item. God made a way so you don't have to be dominated by that stuff. Oh, my God, so now you should be a slave or do lost to the gift of God. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Created in the image. Empowered to have dominion. Rulership over alcoholism. Rulership, see, see, before, if, if you just pattern your life as a Christian after the second Adam, you'll still be strung out on crack and you'll still be alcoholic and you'll probably be divorced. Because you pattern your life after the second Adam, now you are dominating drug addiction, you are dominating alcohol because you operate after the second Adam. Oh my God. You probably would have been and killed yourself by now. My God, all the stuff you'd have been through, woman of God. But because you are trying to pattern your life, my God, after the second Adam, my God, suicide can't get you, my God. Giving up on yourself can't get you. Let all type of men come in out your bedroom can't get you. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Hey, after that, don't get me started. All the stuff you'd have been through, woman of God, you after the second Adam. The first Adam would have killed himself. But the second Adam stood up there and said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stand by her. And I'm going to believe God through it all. And then I can't get nobody saying like that. Oh, the second Adam don't quit. Huh? I said the second Adam don't quit. The first Adam always quit and give up. It's always somebody else's fault. They always got an excuse, my God. They do a whole lot of talking, but they ain't got no walking, baby. They quote a whole lot of scripture, but they ain't got no power. The second Adam walks in power. The second Adam is delivered. The second Adam operate like a king, a queen. My God, who am I talking to the church? Hey, the second Adam. Second Adam. Oh, the second Adam ain't dominated by sin. Oh, the second Adam walks in his king authority and his, oh my God, queen's authority. Oh my God. Pattern yourself after the second Adam. Who is you a slave to and what are you a slave to? Make a choice today that I'm going to be a slave to Christ. I ain't going to be dominated no more by sin. Sin has no dominion. Oh my God, I can go on and on. Oh, Sister Tina, <laughs> oh, you could have quit, my God. The stuff you didn't experience in other places, my God. Oh, my God, I thank God, woman of God, that you're not bringing that pain that happened somewhere else and put it on going home for Christ church. Going home for Christ ain't the cause of that pain, but I thank God you're in class. I thank God you're getting reshaped. I thank God you're getting remolded. God is healing you on the inside, so I have to deal with all that mess. Many of you are frustrated because you're falling after the first Adam. Today, I decree that you follow after the second Adam going forward. You don't have to be dominated by sin. You are victorious. You are fearfully one to be made. You are created in the king's image. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Dominion over finances. The second Adam ain't got time to be offended. Jesus, didn't, Jesus' disciples had no time to be offended. God needed them to advance his kingdom. If they get, think about all the stuff the disciples had to go through. If they carried and held on to the first Adam offenses, they couldn't have done the work of the ministry. Many of you are disqualifying yourself because you're too offended. Everything offends you. That's the first item. Bring your passion now. Some of you have disqualified yourself because you're, you can always tell when you're falling after first or the second item. First item sin is in sin, created sin. The second item, my God, dominated sin. It's the master over sin. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So when you are dominated by something that's of the world, you're operating in the second Adam. When that which used to master you, you mastered it, then you had stepped over into the second Adam. You crossed over. It's time to cross over, baby. That could have been a message right there. It's time to cross over. It's time to cross over. Come on, let's stand on your feet. Let's stand on your feet. Let's come on down, everybody, and cross over. Let's just come cross over. If you feel like you don't need to cross over, stay in this first item. 
but I want to talk to the second Adams. Oh yeah, I want to talk to the second Adams today, baby. I want to talk to those that understand, my God, I be acting like the first Adam too much. It's time to get free from the first Adam. Yeah, today I choose to accept the second Adam. Mm. Oh my God, come on, baby, come on, come on, come on, play it, come on, come on, come on. Let's talk to the Lord. If you need to kneel down, go ahead and kneel down. Don't wait on me. I can't do it. I'm not God. I can't say nothing that God can't say. Oh my God, come on, talk to the Lord. Mm. What do you need from God? What do you need to lay down at the altar? What do you need to yield? What offenses? What offenses? What offenses do you need to?